Hello, dear friends. Here we are with another program here. Not only at Kardec Radio, we're also at the Spirit Society of Richmond in Richmond, Virginia. What a blessing to be with you. We're going to be talking today about chapter or message 41 of the book, Right Path, by the Spirit Emmanuel, through the mediumship of Francisco Cândido Xavier. As you see on the screen, Emmanuel titled this chapter, Patience in Life. So let's take a look together this morning in what kind of circumstances you and I need to be patient, to apply to patience or to learn to be patient, right? Emmanuel says, <clears throat> it is necessary to study patience, to observe each of us in the face of our own conduct in human relations and in the domestic environment. So how are we doing with our conduct this morning, this week, this month, if you're watching this later on demand? How are we acting towards the people who live with us, who got entrusted <clears throat> to us or entrusted us with as family members and friends? And how are we behaving towards those who are not in our family circle or close friends, as we're gonna see, are we acting towards both groups of people the same way? That's necessary in the study of patience on self-reflection. So today I hope this message brings you the opportunity to reevaluate re how you are doing in those behalfs. And of course, we're always sharing this content with you and rest assured, all of the hosts are also reflecting and learning with you. He will say, quote, we normally know how to understand the moral assaults of free enemies, forcing us to reflect on how best to help them constructively re to renew their viewpoints. And in many cases, we rave against the displeasure that an illness is causing on the child. So sometimes it's easier, he will say to us, to be understanding and kind to those who we do not know while being harsher and <clears throat> suffering more displeasure when we see one of us, one of our own kin, because our blood blood ties are still very deep on the earth as of now we consider you know we have family members close family members and friends but remember as a superior spirit you are an immortal being living on the earth under the umbrella of humankind think about jesus and how he loves and cares for each and every being on this planet as much as we see the mentors and spirit guides of the spiritual aid missions and books such as of Andrea Louise, the books Planetary Transition in the World uh, Towards the World of Regeneration by Manuel Falman and Miranda, where you see the, the spiritual guides coming, the mentors teaching and loving each and every one of us and being kind to all. And that's what you and I are working towards, kindness and feel, really feel ourselves as part of the human family, not only on my family, your family, the family of others, but all, because as the law of society, we're put together to progress together. And today we're born in this family to learn a specific set of skills. Next life, only God knows where we're going to be allowed to be incarnate and maybe those who we dislike, quote unquote, dislike on this lifetime, don't see yet as our family will be a brother or sister in humanity one day, God willing. He will say, tolerance towards superiors and subordinates, colleagues and, and associates, relatives and close friends is really the resource of life in which we find the metric of moral work. Tolerance, 
towards everyone, those above us in the hierarchy of the human laws, the human life that we have created, and also those who are in our circle of influence, circle of beings. He will say this is, this is because while beneficence is always sublime and respectable in all its manifestations and attributes, it is always much easier to collaborate in public campaigns in aid of humanity or to favor people with which we are not bound to by bonds of commitment and obligations. Then it is, right, it's just easier to collaborate with those broader campaigns than it is to collaborate with calm, with calmness and understanding, minimal setbacks, and the small humiliations in the individual's environment. So let's take a look at our own life. Sometimes we are kind and generous to the stranger in front of us. And I'm using the word stranger, not air quotes, because ultimately we are all billions of us related because we are all part of humanity. We are all part of the humanity under the guidance of Jesus is one day we're going to learn to be like him, like Jesus, in a sense that we will love and care for each and every creature, regardless if they are, came from our own shared ancestry or not. So Menno is reminding us that it's easier for us to donate to those who are in need, to volunteer with the homeless, to go across the world for missionary trips, all of it well and good and sacred work that should be done. And he says here, it's easier sometimes to do that, which is a public campaign to aid humanity or to help acquaintances that we don't know because we're not bound to them through bonds of commitment and obligation than it is to tolerate with calmness and understanding those who are with us. Imagine if we took into consideration the collective history of humanity, the collective history of our family members and friends that we've shared, that we understand the um, process of reincarnation and coming, the coming together of different folks in the same household who are there bound by ties of ancestry and DNA, you know, the blood ties, and how difficult may they be if we consider that we are multi-dimensional beings, we're multi-millionaire beings, we have all those experiences in our lives. And then, then it is to just um, help someone, be kinder and nicer to someone who is not there all the time, who doesn't know our shortcomings, who, who, can, um, who are not able to as easily push our buttons and press us to be calmer. But he's saying here, it's tolerance towards superiors and subordinates, colleagues and associates, relatives and close friends is really the resource of life in which we find the metric of moral work. It's harder to be kinder, to tolerate, to be understanding to those who we know than it is those who we don't know. So today the invitation is, if you are blessed with the opportunity of having close friends, relatives living around you, challenge yourself. We will challenge ourselves so that we can be kinder to them. We can be more understanding to them as much as we are understanding to others that we don't know. And as we would like them to be understanding towards us. Now, this is the most beautiful part of this message, if you ask me, is what he adds next. Quote, patience for this very reason in its luminous authenticity must be learned, felt, suffered, exercised, and consolidated with those who populate our daily areas, as if we are to sculpt it by immoral fulfillment in the world of our own soul. So we need to learn to be patient. 
We need to feel patience. It needs to touch us deeply. We need to exercise it so that it gets consolidated towards those who live with us, those who were responsible for us when we were younger as our parents, to those who came before us in the older generations, and those who are the fruit of our reproductive activity that allows beings to be reincarnated on the earth. Patience must be learned, felt, suffered, and exercised and consolidated, just like you and I you want to learn. It. Patience is not a skill. If you want to learn how to sew, you have to go buy the fabric, take a course on the sewing machine, learn how to cut. You're going to watch a few YouTube videos. You're going to try. It's going to look okay. And then the more you do, the more you learn about it, the more you exercise by making things, the more you feel like what you're doing is valuable then. The same way with physical activity, the same way if you want to learn a language. Patience is no different. Patience is an immortal acquisition of our souls. And we want to be patient towards everyone. And he finalizes this message by saying, quote, let us proclaim and teach as much as we can, the merits of patience. So let's tell people, be patient. Let's teach our children, be patient. He says, however, let us examine our own reactions in the intimacy, in the intimate experience when facing those who share the daily struggle as partners in kinship and work, ideal and everyday tasks. Let us sincerely ask ourselves, if we are using patience with them and with all other fellow brothers or sisters in humanity, just as we are endlessly tolerated and supported by God's patience. High bar for today for us to practice and look forward to having opportunities to learn patience, to feel patience, to exercise patience, and to consolidate patience in our daily lives. Isn't that beautiful? The more we practice, we can talk about it, we can read all these books, yet we need to ask God for the opportunity of practicing the immoral values that you and I are in need of today and always, so that each and every minute of this blessed incarnation is an opportunity for you and I to grow together while helping and serving all that come our way. Dear friends, it's always an honor and a blessing to be with you. I hope that this message today found you in an open heart and mind way so that we can commit together to practice, learn about, feel, seek help if we need to, practice patience towards those who came on this earth together in a closer manner, be them our relatives, family members or friends. And then we can ex continue to extend it out, our tolerance towards everyone who comes our way. What a blessing to be with you. Questions and comments, leave us. We always read them, we reply to them. And I hope that God willing, I can join you again next week. And until then, stay well, stay safe. Bye-bye, friends.